Oh, he's a remarkable guy. He's very bright, as you may know. Uh, extremely bright, top 2% of the population. But he still puts his head in dark places. So he's, um, apart from being bright, uh, he's very, he's um, very brave. And he's highly skilled. And um, he's an inspiration to the All Blacks. He's a member of the rugby side. So he's a shareholder and, a, and he contributes. And he talks about his role. So he's talking about uh, the breakdown and and what he does to be the most effective he can be. But believe it or not, every week he analyzes his game from the previous week to see how he can improve for the next game. And he's 30 and he's played 103 test matches, is it? Whatever he's played, 100 plus, just over 100. So it's all about an educational environment and self-improvement. And I think as coaches, you know, we, we, we coach a team and we try and, try and assist that team to get better. I think our other job is to coach the 20 odd kids involved, know where they're at, and have a program of self-improvement for them. Um, and this site will enable you to coach your team, but also be have the information add to your information about how you coach individuals and make them better footy players. And that's the two key jobs you've got to do, I think. Um, and it's not only about their ability physically, it's about their ability to, to be bloody good members of, of a team, and it's about their ability to, to handle the situation on the field mentally. So it's a holistic approach, if you know what I mean. So. McCaw was question. I think he's the best in the world, but I'm biased. I'm biased. He's an inspiration to the All Blacks. He's captain aside for, he's a record number of captaincies for the All Blacks, so he's passed Sean Fitzpatrick's record, both as a number of caps and the number of times he's captain aside. And if he wasn't playing in the final, he wouldn't have won. But we didn't have Dan Carter, which was a bit of a problem. But we had the white bait fisherman from in the Waikato, who kicked the winning goal. So I guess also <coughs> it's important to make sure that fringe players are up for it because they might play in the big game at the end of the day. There's a word mm. called rotation, which is often criticised by the New Zealand media about a guy called Graham Henry, used rotation. In other words, played, tried to develop some depth into the All Black team by interchanging players. I remember <coughs> a few years ago, was it 2006 or five? we played at one team against Wales and another team against Ireland. Uh, some of the New Zealand media and ex-All Blacks, old All Blacks, didn't like that. Thought we should play the top team every week. But Steve Donald was part of that. So he's played 30 tests. Probably started in about so he knows the system, he knows the team, you guys love him. Great team man, superb team man. When Colin Slade fell over, I rang him, he was white baiting. In a river in the Waikato, I said, you want to play for the All Blacks? He said, shit yes. I said, you got, how much white bait you got? He said, oh, I've got about five pounds. I said, for three pounds of white bait, you're in. So that was the sort of banter, that's why the sort of guy he is. And he came on and did the business. Did you have to change any of the plans that you have in the way you play? Because Cruden came in, and, well, Slade would have obviously been understudying Daniel Carter. Oh, Carter's not. And Cruden and then... Dan Carter's got a real ability to, to restart the game. His kickoff ability is superb. And we, we regain possession quite a bit when he's restarting. But if you're not right on the button on those restarts, you can give the opposition an opportunity. And so we were more conservative in that part of the game, because we knew that the player wasn't as good to do that, and we couldn't take that risk. We probably did a lot more work in the transition defence area, so that from the last forward defender to the first back defender, it's usually 10 and 7, maybe. <laughs> so we did a lot of work on making sure we had total clarity there, because Daniel was a bloody good defender, and the other guys are not as good. So the relationship between Richie and and, and Beaver and Richie and Aaron was pretty crucial.
and spending time to make sure that link was right was important. Those sort of things. By losing Carter was huge, and but it galvanised the team, <coughs> so they all stepped up and said, "We're going to do this anyway." And there was quite a bit of peace in the group, even when Carter snapped his adductor muscle off the bone. And I saw it happen. I thought, shit. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is big. You guys just said, look, we'll do the business. And Daniel was brilliant. Like Daniel was obviously hurting, and he did that in private. And when he was with the group, he was just a normal <coughs> self, which speaks volumes for his character. And he carried on leading. So we have in the All Blacks, we have what we call individual operating units and there's seven of them and the leaders take each of those units and it depends on where you face. In the back three, midfield backs, inside backs, loose forwards, right hand and left hand side of the scrum. He continued to run his individual operating unit. He talked to Aaron and, Aaron and Steve a lot, uh, even at training. Um, he would just wander up and have a chat in the ear. Um, he continued to be part of the leadership group. He's the secretary of the rugby club. We have a rugby club where we all dress in our club gear once a week and we have a hell of a lot of fun in that rugby club. He's the secretary, so he runs the raffles. And, and when the more you laugh, the more the pressure's decreased and the performance increases. So I think there's a lot of correlation there. So he was great. Do you think the last four years leading up to your World Cup victory has been your biggest challenge as a coach within the All Blacks? Mm. Oh, I'm making sure we got Tabitha Carter. <laughs> <laughs> and McCaw. Yeah. Keeping him fit. Or? Yeah, well, just if the worst scenario happened, yeah. have you got the people who can do the business? Bit of luck, you know. Um, playing too much footy. No, we played 12 test matches in 14 weeks. And how we handle that, how you handle that situation, which is ridiculous, but factual. Like the Northern Hemisphere, you guys had every opportunity, didn't you? Because you had the ideal build up for the World Cup. You had time out of the game, guys could refresh, have a couple of test matches here, build up the World Cup. Around Robin of four, you're going to be busy, aren't you? You're going to be the best you can be. Like we had Super 15 finished in July, and then we had a Tri Nations Test Series, and then we had the World Cup. We were buggered. How's that sound? Yeah. So, how you handle that, I think, is important. It's a bit like you guys coaching your teams, and you've had a long season, you get to the, you get to the money. I don't mean financially, you get to the winning of the championship and how do you build in and win that championship with a group of kids or senior team or whatever has played a lot of football and they're starting to fall off it. So how do you peak them for that for that when the real when it really counts? So that was a concern. Um, learning from previous World Cups, which I've I know now that we didn't do well enough in previous World Cups. Probably because no continuity of management. You know, in New Zealand, they the cycle for coaches is four years. I'm the first person to ever coach the side wrong in four years. So they're very astute now, aren't they? <laughs> uh, so, but you learn, don't you? And and um, you learn what you didn't do the last time. And revisiting old World Cups was critical because it's a different competition. And you found that out in the final. You just got to expect the unexpected, and they're hell of a hard to win. And teams play better in those World Cups than they do in normal tests. And players give a lot more, more emotion. Like the media conferences in the World Cup, like we'd probably have 250 people in the room for a media conference. In a normal test match, you might have 50. So there's a lot of more scrutiny, a lot more attention, and players rise to that because it's the big, the big scene.
we put a team slate around him, and that team slate met with him every week, and we set objectives for that week, what we wanted. And he is part of setting those objectives. So we've got a hell of a good um, a rehab physio person. Uh, the, the team conditioning <coughs> coach, Wayne Smith and myself. All right? Like Wayne's, he's, he's back coach, defence coach. I do bugger all, so it was us four. And we'd meet him every week, early in the week, and say, OK, Colin, let's, let's try and... But what do you think you can do this week? Let's set these objectives. Some of them will be physical, some of them will be skill-wise, some of them might be about balance. Um, so I think setting, having a, pro a player who's got challenges, setting a group of people around him to help him, where he needs to run that group of people, so he needs to chair those meetings. We, we have input, we have the resource, but he needs to be responsible, doesn't he? He needs to be accountable, so he needs to run that. He needs to write that meeting up, give us a copy, these are the things I'm going to do Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, do the same next week. So you finish up with a better, hopefully, a, a better player, because of that, who can handle it. Um, he stuffed his adductor tendon, and he's had an operation, so hopefully it's passed because I think he's got the ability. And with Aaron Cruden and him, both young guys coming on, they'll put some pressure on Daniel going forward, and that'll be great. I coached at Auckland Grammar School for six years. Loved it. Loved it. Um, ideal environment. And, you know, we had Grant Fox and Nicky Allen, who played 5 8 for the All Blacks, and John Drake, and the Wetton brothers, and so on. That was brilliant. And then I, like I was an authoritarian coach. Do this, do that, do the other thing. Right? Yeah. It changed as you go on. That was, that was from the 1970s. I've been coaching the game for 37 years, every year, for 37 years. So I've had a team every year for 37 years. So, um, and you change. As the clientele that you're coaching changes. Uh, went to university and um, 1981, Coach University. And they gave me shit, didn't they? <laughs> Good shit. So they, they would, I was still an authoritarian coach, but coaching university students compared with schoolboys is quite different. We still got through. Like we, we, was, we became a good team and I enjoyed coaching them. Um, but I, I think, like if you're talking about today, I think it's very important to um, pull the intellectual property of that group of people together and use them to help you coach the team so they feel a big part of it. Now I didn't do it in 1981, but if I was coaching a team in 2012, a senior team, that's what I'd do. So I'd try and bring the, the, the knowledge of that group together so that they're all involved in, in improving what we're doing. Right? Now I still think you've got to pull the, pull the strings. You've still got to be the man who organises it all, and you still have your input. But you use the people that you're coaching to improve the, the environment and the team. But the major reason the All Blacks are successful is because they've taken ownership of that group, of that team. And when you, pe when you give people ownership, they're going to play a hell of a lot better. If they haven't got ownership and you're the owner, they're not going to do that. So um, making people self-reliant and ownership is what our job is, I reckon. You know, make, so they're more self-reliant athlete at the end of the season than the beginning of the season. And, and they can run themselves. They know what they have to do to be better. Like each of the guy in the All Blacks had a, had a weekly program which they wrote themselves. So I'm doing this on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Some of it involve re some of involve conditioning, some of involve rehab, some of involve school development, some of involve preparation for the game. 